uh, this goes back to an inc an incident yes. um, several uh, months ago, mm -hmm. where you uh, decided to talk to uh, That's AOC. Time travel. That's why you do this. That's and why you do Wayne's that. World, they yep. time travel mm -hmm. like that. Sorry. Um, and you, you know, first of all, you said she was your favorite big booty Latina. You did not say she was your least favorite, which would have been an insult. That would have been mean. Right. Yes, you, I would never you, have done that. You said she was your favorite, which is a compliment. One um, of the nicest things you can say, and then she transcribed it as me saying ass and juicy. A lot of adjectives that I would never use, especially in front of a congresswoman like that. So, <laughs> right. yeah, I mean, I would never, listen, the only thing you're ever going to get from me is pure first-class treatment from any politician. But she is my, she's actually my second favorite big booty Latina, because my favorite big booty Latina works here, and her name is Sarah Gonzalez. So if I don't say that, I will get stabbed, or I could potentially lose my job. So AOC is my second favorite big booty Latina, but yes, I sent the internet on fire for like 72 hours, but it really wasn't anything I did, Stu. There's nothing that I did. No. I called her a big booty Latina, and she freaked out, and she went and made 17 videos. She went on her Instagram. She filmed me in reverse, you know, angle. So, like, she put me, like, on her platform. Does that make sense? Like, right. this could have been a nothing burger. Like, I just walk in, I tweet it. Maybe it gets a million views, and that sounds cool. But she didn't just share my tweet. She actually downloaded the video, reshared it, then it got like 20 million views, all because she did it. So it's really kind of crazy how her incidentally wanting to be a victim of like the worst sexual assault since January 6th, you know, the first, she even said it was one of the worst attacks on Capitol Hill since January 6th, mm -hmm. because there was a Capitol police officer right there that didn't do anything. So she said that she uh, felt similar to January 6th. She actually said that when she came incredible. out. But, but my whole long story short is her Twitter was the most important thing of this whole event her sharing my video, and then she went and proceeded, after she stole my content and shared it as her own, that she was trying to expose me, she proceeded to block me, so I couldn't even see my own content that she stole from me, mm. and this made me upset, Stu, this made it worse, hard for me to sleep at night, because my favorite big booty Latina is on the other side of this block wall, and she's using my content against me, I want to see the comments, I want to see the reactions, I want to see what the heck the people are saying, and she's a, she's a congresswoman, I'm one of her constituents in a way, in a very roundabout way, as an American citizen, even though I'm not in her district, that's neither here nor there for the legality of the lawsuit, my point being, being, I just want to see what she's trying to say about me, and she won't let me, so I had to file a lawsuit in federal court against her. Yeah, she's obviously an influential uh, public figure who's, you know, accusing you of something, uh, so seeing her content is a very, very valid concern of yours. Um, so it's, uh, they, they, she blocked you, and that's illegal now. The, the Supreme Court ruled on this, right? Yes, and Donald Trump had gotten in trouble, and this is actually the second time uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez has been in trouble for this exact same lawsuit. She had blocked a New York assemblyman, I forget the guy's name, I think his first name is Joe, and he sued her under a federal lawsuit, and she had to lift the ban on him as well. And I'm not asking for any money. I mean, um, if we settle, potentially she might have to pay the legal fees, or let's say I lose, potentially I might have to pay her legal fees, which would be terrible. That That's that's basically the biggest risk. Because people are like, Alex, why would you do this? You're going to waste the court's time, this and that. Well, I'm taking a risk. I've spent nearly $1,200 in just legal filing fees and just kind of, you know, basic lawyer fees to get it, you know, off the ground. And I am taking a little bit of a risk because potentially they could say this is frivolous, but they're not going to because this is the exact same lawsuit that she's already had to settle. So that's what gave me the confidence to do it is because this is not AOC's first rodeo, Stu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is, there's not a question on this, right? Like This isn't a borderline issue. She's not allowed to block her constituents. Yeah, exactly right. That's straight out it. For, yes. that, that is the way, if she wants to this job, she has to live by the requirements of this job. And one of the requirements of this job is to allow the public to hear what she's saying and what she's putting out there publicly. And Stu, full stop, because I know Stu is not, I'm a social media addict, and yes. so is she, so is she. Mm -hmm. Stu's not as addicted. He's no. very well adjusted as a family, kids. <laughs> um, but her denying me on, on this platform for me is like, it's like, a, I don't know, it's very embarrassing for you. You would even notice if you were blocked by AOC. But for me, it's like a big deal. I don't want AOC to block me on Twitter like this. So it, it, sound, it seems frivolous. It seems very dumb. But listen, she's a politician. She's held to a different standard. If I want to block you, I'm going to block you. Trust me, there's somebody watching this right now. I will block you if you say something to me. But I'm not a congresswoman. I'm not president of the United States. So I'm not held to that higher standard. So... Listen, I get why she'd want to block me, but unfortunately, legally, you can't block me, babe. Mm. Um, I uh, I have a a bunch of a, a good catalog of just words and people that I've muted. 
Yeah, you okay. mute. See, that shows I, you I'm you're a muter. muter. See, I'm, I'm a, a blocker. You're getting the Dikembe Mutombo block. Oh, really? I don't. Yeah, because the mute, then they can still kind of chirp at you, and then people can kind of still see them in the replies. You just can't see them. For me, no, I like to send a message. I do like to block. That's why another reason why I like AOC and CNBC reached out, which I thought that was really weird, too. That was like the, another thing. Uh, it was very unusual. My attorney filed it in federal court within three hours of it being filed. He got an interview request by CNBC. I know, I, he doesn't even know how. Mm. So there's some sort of thing. They have somebody that works there. Someone who's watching. I mean, I guess yeah. because I sued AOC. And I'm actually surprised. I, I really shouldn't be because I just spent a whole time talking about how her sharing it made me, you know, like somebody put me on her platform. But when they say this in, the, in her Vanity Fair Vogue cover, they said that AOC is the third most popular politician behind Biden and Trump. And I actually might believe that. It sounds insane, but this lawsuit, I thought it'd maybe get some attention. Within three hours, I'm getting requests from the liberal media wanting to know what I did to their baby, you know, their, their golden goose. Yeah, uh, so what is your goal here? Like, what, if, if, if this works out perfectly in this lawsuit for, for Alex Stein, what does it look like? If it works out perfectly, she wants me to go away uh, well, if it works out perfectly, she unblocks me and my attorney gets his attorney fees paid for. Probably not. She could block me, then I would still be responsible for the attorney fees. So that'd be a win. It cost me a little bit of money, and then I can still tweet at her. And she could mute me, and I wouldn't even know. So she could just do that <laughs> right. to win exactly. ceremonially. That's all she'd have to do. Yeah. But but at least I'd get to subtweet her. I'd be able to quote tweet her. Because that stuff matters. It sounds weird in this Twitter war, right. and now that I have almost half a million followers, mm. I'm not near, I think she has 16 million, I'm not near on her level, but I have fans too. So when I quote tweet her, she doesn't just hear from me, she hears from my supporters. So that's why it's actually important in the public square. Now, if somebody didn't have a lot of followers, it might be hard to get AOC's attention, but I can, mm -hmm. right? So her having me blocked, I can't communicate with her. If she doesn't have me blocked, she might not hear from me, but she'll hear from my minions in the subtweets saying, listen to Alex or yada, yada, yada. Right. So this is why Twitter, I can talk to my baby AOC, and you know I'm well known for going on Capitol Hill and putting cameras in their faces and confronting these politicians. So I don't want to just have to confront them physically, you know, not that I would ever touch them, but I'm saying I don't want to just, you know, confront them in person. I also want to be able to kind of confront them digitally or talk to them. Through social media. I mean, it is the way this stuff is fought these days. I mean, this but is it's how the weird. of ideas works. Isn't it weird, Stu? I'm doing, I'm I just so... try to remove myself from it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't blame you for not being addicted to it. You're not always looking at social media like I have me. like six words that are not muted. Everything else I've muted. Just, I can't, you can't, it gets Glenn Beck is muted. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> Eagles, Blue Jays. That's about all that ever comes yeah. out of my feet. Um,